Good morning. Coffee with Karen. <laughs> oh my gosh, do we have so much to talk about, especially those who are sensitive. And I think this is going to find the right people for sure. And I just really can't wait for the conversation to happen in the comments um, about this topic, because I think it's going to be really helpful for people. How do you, what do you think's going on here? I just woke up. <laughs> Does anyone else do that? Does anyone else just get on camera after they wake up? <laughs> I don't know, but I do like to be, I, I do like to uh, go against the grain. I always have. Anyway, sensitive people, you know, I have this mug and this, I, this one, it, um, I like the song Two, it's just a, it's, you know, when I need to feel this, it's helpful to have it, but I don't always feel this way, you know, well, when, you know, as a sensitive person, you can, things can break your stride pretty easily for like a, hopefully a, you know, momentary kind of, you know, setback, but things can break your stride. That's for sure. So we're always, you know, trying to build ourselves back up, aren't we? Well, let me start from the beginning. <laughs> um, so I am, I've always been a very sensitive person. I think it's, be well, it's definitely because of the Myers-Briggs. So I'm a feeler and I'm a strong feeler. I haven't always been actually, you guys. When I first took the Myers-Briggs, when I was in my 20s, I was actually a thinker. I was actually a T. And I don't know if I, I probably was because I probably wanted, it was like I wanted to be a T. So I probably answered it in the way that I th wanted to be perceived, you know, is my guess. But the older I've gotten, the more sensitive I've gotten. And, and also because I've gotten more in touch with my intuition. And I use intuition in terms of like, I've gotten more in touch with, you know, on the other side of the veil, let's just say, you know, I've gotten more in touch with my spirit guides because I'm, I can, I don't hear them. I, I don't see them. But I get, you know, like these sort of like downloads in my head, like you got to talk about this or, and that's what's happening today. Like I woke up and I'm like, oh yeah, I got to talk about that. <laughs> and I wasn't dreaming about it or anything, you know, it's just, um, it's just my intuition, you know, and it's a safer place for me. I don't think it's safe, but it's easier for me to call it my intuition because I just don't, I don't identify, and it's totally fine for people who do, I don't identify with like different words that have to do with um, communication and connecting with the, um, your spiritual self and your higher self, connecting with your higher self, basically. It's like my higher self is how I feel. My guides are communicating with me quite a bit, and but I don't identify with other words that might describe that. So... That's why I use intuition. But the, the more you work on your intuition, or maybe you've never had to work on it, it's just been there. I'm, I'm wondering how other people feel. I mean, are you a highly sensitive person? I think it's that. Plus, if you're, let's just say you're a strong intuitive and you're a thinker for the Myers-Briggs, your thinking would really help moderate that. You know, because anytime you hear something, any kind of judgment, any type of suggestion, any type of um, you, any kind of conversation, any decision making, you're you're starting with your head and you'll move to your heart. But for feelers, we start with our heart. Like, how did that just feel? How did how does it feel to make that decision? How does it feel um, when I heard somebody say something to somebody else. So regardless of what it was, it's just, you know, it's, you're always starting with your heart and moving to your head. But if you're a strong feeler and you're strong intuitive, the heart feels are really strong. So it's, it, and depending on the topic, it's harder to move to your head. 
you know, or you will, you will get there. I always get there, but it can take me a much longer time where thinkers, you know, boom, they're, they're there, you know? So I find it a few things. I find that I am no longer, I'm working on no longer feeling ashamed about that because, you know, I don't know how, I don't know about you guys and I don't remember anybody saying this. I probably said it to myself a lot. The, you're too sensitive, you know, that type of thing. My camera is really not, am I fuzzy? I think it must be the lighting or something. I'm not doing anything too sophisticated with lighting and all that. You can tell. <laughs> Just sit on my couch. But is it hard to watch me? Like, it's not very clear. I don't know. You have to tell me. I can handle that. I can handle everything, but, like, I wouldn't be overly sensitive about that. I just don't know what I would do about it right now. Okay. Anyways. Um, oh, did I miss? So, not only... So, so for some of us who are feeling, who are um, extroverted feelers, extroverted feelers versus introverted feelers, there's a big difference, okay? Because extroverted feelers will process and extrovert their feelings. (laughs) They process out loud. They will feel right away and communicate right away. So it can come off as defensive, you know, and it probably is. It's like, well, I'm ah, feeling from my heart, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. It doesn't mean it's wrong. When I feel that feedback is given in an effective way, I can, that works for me. But many, many people don't know how to give feedback effectively. And I do, but not always. Like, you know, it depends on how much I'm feeling. So, but extroverted feelers are going to have a much different reaction than an introverted feeler. So, again, extroverted feelers have the need to process things like out loud. I personally, and I don't know if this has to do with extroversion feeling, but I have a feeling of pro- I need to process things like right away, you know, otherwise I can hang on to them, you know, like I, if, if some if something is amiss in a relationship or something, I have a need to talk about that as soon as possible because I can't process it unless I'm talking, unless I'm processing it out loud. And I have come to notice that one of the best things my husband does for me, and I've had to tell him because he is an introverted thinker, I have had to tell him this is really good for me. And it, it works amazing as an extroverted feeler is if I'm upset about something, I just say to him, can you just sit and listen to me? And just hold it's basically it's just holding space like can you just I don't please don't give me any feedback right away don't try to solve anything don't give me solutions that's the worst thing you can do with an extroverted feeler is start giving solutions because I'll come up with my own solutions you know through that conversation and and in t- the more in tune you are the more intuitive in tuned you are you will come up with your own solutions by the, by the end of that. And that's the important thing. That's the important thing. Like, yeah. So he will not, like, I need, I do need to remind him though, because not nobody, people don't know what you need. So I do need to remind him. I, you know, like we had a conversation yesterday. I said, could you, I said, just a reminder. (laughs) Cause his instinct would be to jump in and like, help me feel better right away, which is really kind, you know, but it doesn't help me to not get it out. Like it doesn't help me to 
find solutions right away. But thinkers want to do that. Thinkers are like, let's solution, 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 you know. And for me, I need to make sure that, especially as an extrovert, that I can communicate fully what I'm feeling. And if I don't communicate fully what I'm feeling, and introverts may feel the same way, but introverts are going to be figuring out in their head. You know, introverts are going to um, think before speaking. Extroverts, they process their thinking out loud. So that doesn't mean that, you know, there's so many little um, nuances in society where, you know, we kind of, we put these labels on people who communicate a certain way. And there's a real reason for that. That is an innate, your Myers-Briggs type is an innate personality trait. There's nothing you can do about that. You can hamper it. You can guide it. You can put boundaries on it. But you will, you're not going to get rid of it. It is something you're born with and you're not going to get rid of it. And it's very interesting to me because there's been times in my life, I would say since my mom died, I'm way more sensitive. And probably menopause didn't help too. However, you know, it's, it's the hormone thing, right? But that's still, you know, I'm way more sensitive. But I've always been a sensitive person, but I'm way more sensitive. And you know what? I'm not going to keep trying to, like, apologize for it, you know? And we shouldn't. We shouldn't apologize for it. There's no reason to. Because the um, feelers and empaths are very much needed, <laughs> Very much needed in a, in a, you know, a thinking environment. But it can definitely be challenging. And it's challenging for the thinkers too, especially the introverted thinkers. Because introverted thinkers need to think through things and then with logic, but, and they're usually quiet. Like, I don't usually hear, and the, the interesting thing is, you guys, and this is definitely so, I could see this soul contract. We'll talk about soul contracts in another time, just explore them a little bit. I don't have a lot of knowledge. I mean, I understand them intuitively. And once I, I was introduced to the idea of a soul contract, I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. But there's no doubt my soul contract, which basically, if that's new to you, it's basically like the, the an idea that when you are born, be prior to you being born, you decided these are the lessons, you and your higher self or whatever, your higher self decided this is, these are the lessons I would like to work on in this lifetime. And these are the people I'm going to put around you to help you work on that. These are the people I'm going to put around you to support you um, while you work on that. All that kind of stuff. I am surrounded in a very loving way, by ISTJs. Now, I know I'm talking a lot about the Myers-Briggs. I'm certified in it, and I worked with students with it a lot. But, um, I mean, I am surrounded by ISTJs. So, basically, without going into too much detail, introvert introverts, sensors, who basically saw, um, they will, it's, let's see, is it how you make decisions? No. I can't remember now. Um, they basically, oh, take in information. You'll basically um, um, communicate by, you know, or like step by step by step, basically. So you will start at A and then you, you'll go to B and you'll go to C and that's how you learn. Okay. So intuitives, which is funny. I'm also an intuitive in the Myers-Briggs. So that's another third thing that's on top of this. So intuitive is the N, and intuitive is the opposite letter of S. Okay, so the S is the, I didn't mean to get into the Myers-Briggs now, but there is, it's kind of a whole thing. Um, so the S is, again, they learn by, they take in information, they give out information by step by, like, um, you know, it's a step-by-step -step process, basically. So they need to, you know, like my husband is an S and he'll, if he's going to put together a piece of furniture, he'll, he'll lay out all the pieces. He'll go through the direction step. He'll, you know, make sure, you know how they say, like, make sure you have all these pieces. 
<laughs> he'll count them. So intuitive, and then, you know, he'll go step by step by step. Intuitives are big picture people. So they're like, yeah, just give me some pictures and I'll put that together. I'm not counting all those pieces. I'm just going to trust they're there. <laughs> and sometimes that's not a good thing. Sometimes it's not a good thing. But I'm like, yeah, I'll take the risk. You know, I'm not, I'm not counting all those, you know. Uh, it's more complicated than that just because there's other parts of the personality type. But getting back to who I'm surrounded by. So I want you to be thinking about who are you surrounded by, especially with thinkers. If you're a feeler, and my guess is if you clicked on, excuse me, I'm burping. If you clicked on this video, my guess is <clears throat> you're either a strong intuitive, which has made you more sensitive, or you're a feeler. Um, and you're, you know, it just makes you sensitive. But I am literally surrounded by ISTJs. So the, the T is the important part here. And I mean, I am not kidding you. My sister, who's my best friend, my husband, who's my best friend, ISTJs, my I have a lot of best friends. No, I don't have a lot of best friends. Um, I have three really good friends. ISTJs. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's amazing. Yeah, they're all ISTJs. And that's not, that's not a coincidence, you know. And it's not that it could work both ways. It could be, you know, my husband... It has learned a lot from me, you know, um, he gets challenged by me just as much as, you know, not challenged, but like, you know what I mean? Like he's, his, he's growing and evolving <clears throat> because of the way, because he is married to an F, a feeler and an empath. <clears throat> so but it's just fascinating to me that when I look at my life that I'm completely surrounded by them. And, you know, it, it very well could be, you know, I've always known it because, you know, it cracks me up. But I've never really sat and thought about why. Like, why in my soul contract? And and I, I it, it could be for protection. I mean, which is great, but I don't feel like I need protection. But I, you know, I just, it's almost like they hold space for me. That's how I, you know, that's how I feel. So as a, as someone who's quite sensitive and they, it's like these five people understand me and they don't, I can trust them and count on them to, to not ditch me for being a feeler. Cause feelers can feel that that can happen. Oh, you're too dramatic. You're too sensitive, you know? But I don't accept those labels at all anymore. And I'm sure I heard it a lot as a kid, which even makes it harder for people. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if you've heard it. Well, thank goodness I am. Because it's a part of what, now I've had to learn to do this, but I've gotten very, very, very good feedback from, I worked with students for 30 years and had one-on-one -on -one conversations and it's made, you know, and so have the ISTJs because three of them were doing the same career I was doing. But my conversations with students were very different than their conversations. My conversations were heartfelt and then moved to the head, like then moved to the practicality. So let's get like it's it's how counselors are, you know, you just not not all of them. But, you know, um, it's let's get to the root of things. You know, let's have a conversation. Let's unpack this. I'm very good at doing that. And I enjoy it because, and, you know, I wasn't very good at doing that when I was 16. I might have been. I don't know. But um, some of it's just innate. You know, some of it just come and you have to learn the skills and have the experience and stuff. But, <clears throat> but the ISTJs, my, the ISTJs in my life who were doing that with students, went right to the practical stuff, you know, and it was much harder for them to have conversations that would help students move along, 
you know, in their lives. Because, you know, they just wanted to jump to solutions and steps and checklists and all that kind of stuff, you know. And that's not really, I mean, it worked for some students. It definitely worked for the students who were had similar personality type. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm on a pillow and I don't want the light to. So this is Coffee with Karen, if you're wondering. This is what Coffee with Karen is like. I just wake up and decide, oh, I feel like talking about this today. Which is really helpful for an extrovert, I'll tell you. So... Anyways, you know what I realized, too, is that my cat, Lucy, here she is. Sometimes you guys hear her, but she's actually quite quiet today. Here she is. Um, she's an extroverted feeler, too. I just, I've come to realize that more and more. We put our, our other cat down in July. It is November right now. And he was... I mean, he, he stole the attention most of the time. So she has always had a back seat. I mean, they were around for 16 years together. No, well, they were both 18, yeah, 16 years together because I got him when he was two. But um, I'm really getting to know her since he's passed, and she is an extroverted feeler. She talks all the time, drives me nuts. And I'm cracking up, you know, because I talk all the time too. In fact, actually, I had a dream last night <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. I got really mad. I think it was Jim, my husband, and he was somebody. That I was with the three of them, and I could see the, the person. I don't remember who we were talking to, but they looked across at him and said, she just talks all the time. She just talks all the time. And I think my mom got that label a lot, which really hurt her, you know, and it's it's not about talking all the time. It's about processing. We process out loud. Extroverts process out loud. That's how they problem solve. That's how they express their feelings. That's why they come off defensive. I don't really feel defensive, but I'll get the feedback that I'm being defensive because I'm processing my feelings out loud. You know? So it's something extroverted feelers really have to work on because you don't want to come off defensive. But if, especially it depends on the topic, right? Like there's a lot of topics I can start with my head, you know, when it comes to details and, you know, the more experience you get, you know, let's just say people leave comments on here that, you know, can be hurtful. Um, the more that have, and, and, and if you don't know people, you're just kind of like, yeah, okay, you don't you don't know me, you know. I think the big hardest part of for me <clears throat> is when I don't feel understood. That and that is really hard for me. And if somebody were to give me feedback and I just and it's clear they don't understand, like they don't understand where I'm coming from. That's really, really hard for me. It's not hard for me to hear the feedback. It's hard for me to not want to pursue that conversation thoroughly until I'm convinced or I'm clear that they understand that I, so I, until I'm fully understood. So it's not about, and it comes off, it can come off defensive. It can come off um, <clears throat> like you're justifying but again, that's really an extroverted feeler thing. But I don't know if anybody else feels that way. Or, you know, but it's really, that is, I'm coming to discover that that, if I don't feel understood, that is, it's extremely important to me to feel understood. If I don't, I can like, you know, I don't know, especially as I get older. I mean, my boundaries are going up very fast, especially with stuff going on in the world and <clears throat> just like I'm not, if I don't feel understood and you're not willing to work on that, then it's getting very easy for me to basically say, okay, I'm, this relationship's not healthy for me, you know? I don't know. It's interesting. It's not easy being a sensitive person, is it? I mean, it's not easy 
well, you know, I, I'm telling you, I'm, the T's and all of these thinkers that I have in my life, they are all strong, strong T's. I don't think it's as hard for them. I think if you asked them, they would agree. Because my husband, you know, I mean, I, I rarely know if he ever has any problems because first of all, he's an introvert. So he's just going to figure it out in his head. He ain't going to, he, and it's not that he doesn't want to tell me. He actually doesn't. He doesn't. He just wants to figure it out in his head and move on. And as a thinker, he just wants to move on, you know? And I'm like, you need to feel it. You need to feel it. <laughs> What's in there? And he's like, I don't know. There's nothing in there. <laughs> Yes, there is. There's feelings in there. That's interesting. So, as part of this channel, my guess is there's going to be a lot of feelers here. There's going to be a lot of feelers here in this channel. Um, or intuitives. Okay. So, thinking intuitives. So, you think are intuitives you are going to provide, well, all of us in the, in the community are going to provide a very good balance. Thinking intuitives versus feeling intuitives, not versus, but feeling intuitives or thinking intuitives. There's going to be a nice balance. You thinking intuitives are going to provide a different perspective than it's probably information, more logic. Um, in the comments, in the feeling intuitives are going to, they're going to communicate their feelings. Okay. So you're going to see the difference in the, in comments. And it's really important. We honor like the feelers will really learn feeling intuitives are really going to learn that perspective and it will help balance. It helps me balance when I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's good. And then thinker intuitives, you're, you be, uh, you know, as, as open as you can be to, um, it might sound dramatic or it might sound overinflated and it really isn't. There's something to what feeling intuitives are communicating. So I think this is, I, I, you know, cause the intuitives are the folks who are going to find themselves mostly or the intuitive seekers, like, or everybody's in, has intuition, but it's just people who want to work on that. That's People are on a spiritual journey or people who just want to feel connected or people who just want who want to um, work on their intuition and make it stronger and lean into God more from but not from an, a, a religious perspective necessarily. And it's OK if you want to have it from a religious perspective. I'm not in like it's comments about like the Bible and stuff aren't helpful for me just because I don't have any of that experience. And I have an, I have negative experience when people do that. Um, but that doesn't mean it's not welcome here because other people might, you know, like to look up Bible verses. I don't have a Bible. So, um, but other people might, I mean, I'm sure other people do. So, cause it's not really about religion, but you know, whatever it is, it is. And whatever is helpful. That's really what it is. Okay, well, that was a long morning with Karen, uh, coffee with Karen. I feel better though. <laughs> See, I got to extrovert my feelings. So I hope this conversation is helpful for a few people. Um, I'd love it if you left comments. I, I, you know, we're getting to a point in the growth of the channel that we're going to have to think about either getting someone to help us Mo well, we definitely have to monitor the the comments because I don't want anything rude or um, overly political, especially on the right side. That's just where this channel stands. I, you know, this again for the political stuff. Um, I've always been a conservative, a center left, basically, and so and the the center part of me is the. Um, fiscal responsibility. I've always been very fiscally responsible. I've never hold, except for one time in college, did I hold a credit card balance. I know that's not possible for a lot of people. So my circumstances were, my privilege was different for sure. 
But anyway, so, um, but that's where my left comes in, right? So, um, anyways, but I, so there, you know, the reason I was talking about the comments, you're probably gone. Everybody's gone now. <laughs> I'm still talking. Everybody's gone. Um, yeah, so I'm reading them. I think I'm going to stop responding unless I just, I'm like, oh yeah, I, I just, this, I just need to say something about this just because I connect to it. Um, but, and I don't know, like my sister's behind the scenes going through all the comments, but she literally went through 10,000 comments the other day and it took like six or seven hours. And I, it, from, for a growing, for a gr growing business, and I don't even really kind of consider this as a business. I want to, I want to, I mean, it is a business, but I want to make a space that's effective. And I'm not sure that that's a good use of her time at all to go through. So we'll have to figure that out. But, um, but I want, the reason I'm talking about this is because I want you to know we're not ignoring it. But the most important thing to me now is that your comments are providing a sense of community for people. So anyone who's commenting here, it's not for me. It's not for me. It's for you guys. Because, you know, one of the things that was really helpful for me prior to the election was if I heard something being processed to go into the comments and read what other people were saying. That was really helpful for me. So I'm hoping that the comments here are the same for you. And so that's why I'm encouraging you to leave them. Don't leave them for me. Leave them for each other, you know. And I never expected those people to get back to me anyways. So it's just as a feeler, I feel like if I've asked you to leave a comment that I should be reading them all. And it's impossible. It's impossible. But we are, you know, getting ideas. And we're going to have um, email lists soon. An email list and, a, and an email where you can email us if you have something specifically you want to say to my sister or I. So like on the operations or just an idea for, you know, things to talk about or whatever. So, okay. All right. So you feelers out there, we got to, ain't nothing going to break our stride, right? All right. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.